What's good is the one, the only. But what do I know, boxing? Back to y'all with another one of my classic videos, man. I wanted to come at come at y'all at a different angle. Um, a lot has been said over the past weekend with the fight between Josh Taylor and Jack Catterall. I think we all agree that Jack Catterall should be undisputed at 140 right now. But I want I want to come at y'all at a different angle. I want y'all to re check this out. This is what Josh Taylor had to say after reviewing the fight. So I want to bring this in for y'all, okay? Josh Taylor, this is the Instagram page, I believe. I have taken a few days for some well-earned time with my family after not seeing them for a few months. I've had a chance to watch the fight back. First and foremost, I want to congratulate Jack Catterall on a great fight. He rose to the occasion and fought a, fought a valiant fight. However, I believe I won a very close fight. Many fans believe Jack deserved the decision, and that's fine. We both went in there. We fought our guts out for 12 rounds. But the personal attack on myself, especially my family, are disgusting and uncalled for. My days at 140 are numbered. My future is at welterweight. Jack Catterall deserves another shot as soon as possible. I've never ducked a challenge in my career, and I'd ha be happy for a fight to fight Jack again. But... It will have to be at welterweight. Jack is a great sportsman, hell of a fighter, and deserves every bit of it, admiration he's been receiving. Okay, so I'm just leave it at that. Okay. Um. Before I before I touch on everything that I want to get on, I, I want you guys to hear something from Tim Bradley speaking on his fight with Pacquiao. I'm like, what do you know about boxing? Right. Why are you even commenting? And the fact that it got so much attention, so much exposure, and it kind of like, you know, went viral all around the world and we have everybody against you. And, you know, it definitely affects you because I, I felt like I didn't do anything wrong. What was the hardest thing that you had to hear during that time? That I was a fake champion, that I didn't deserve to be a champion, that I'm not a true fighter, that I'm not a real fighter. Um, you know, death threats were sent to my home, um, which is... Now worst. that I think about it, it's like, like, really? Like, why? And the fact that, you know, I had to walk around and people were like, you know, whispering, hey, he didn't win. you know, and just whispering nasty things to me. And um, I had to deal with that, you know, and it's just something like, you know, you work for something your whole life and you finally get to that point and then you accomplish your goal and then everybody take it all away from you. Like, it just feels like death. And that was the words of Tim Bradley speaking on his fight after um, Manny Pacquiao. Wait, and it's actually something else he said that I wanted to, to want you guys to hear. Honestly, felt like death, and I felt like literally like taking my own life. Okay. Was that bad? I want you guys to hear that. First and foremost, man, I want you guys to understand. First and foremost, man, understand. Know your place, bro. All right, we're fans of boxing. Yes, we are fans of boxing, but. You know, from what, you know, Josh Taylor is saying, like, the, the the derogatory comments towards his family, like, you guys have to understand, first and foremost, you guys are getting upset, We and, and, and it happens, I felt, I, you know, falling victim to this as well, we get upset at the wrong people, a fighter is gonna do what a fighter is gonna do, a fighter is in there to fight, we have to hold these judges more accountable, man. You know, we have to hold these judges, judges, judges more, more accountable. First and foremost, man, going back off what Josh and Tim Bradley saying, like, you know, to say that, that these are fake fighters, these are not real fighters. First of all, what have you done in your life to tell these guys that they are not fighters? You haven't, majority of you guys never even stepped foot in the ring before. So who are you to tell this man who's been doing this his entire life that he's not a real fighter? Like, and this is, this is what his profession is. This is what he's been doing his entire life. So you got, we, we have to like this, this, this anger that we have towards the fighters. And I, I get it at times when a fighter definitely loses a fight and he trots around like, you know, but my whole thing is, bro, why, why is that same energy not being put into these judges? These judges are who you need to hold, hold accountable for the action. These judges are the ones that, that, that judge, uh, boxing is an opinionated sport. It's an opinionated sport. So these judges, based off of their opinion, they put down and based off of their opinion and, and a lot of times corruption, they put down the uh who they feel won the round and it adds up. So 
why instead of attacking these fighters that you, it's something that you have no response to. First of all, you guys, majority of you guys don't even know what it's like to be a fighter, first and foremost. So I challenge you guys to not even, you don't even have to get, go. don't even go to a full training camp. Just get in the ring and spar, okay? Know what these fighters have to go through before you start trying to tell them what they are and what they're not. Because at the end of the day, man, you don't know what, is, what a fighter has to really go through. All right, leaving their kids for training camp. And yes, I get it. Like I said in my last video, it is one thing to lose a fight because the better man, the the, uh, the guy opposite of you was just a better man. I can accept that. But it's one, it's a whole nother thing to lose a fight because not because the man was better, but because of corruption of a sport. But who do you hold accountable for that? Why are we just holding the fighters accountable for that? Why, why are we not talking about these judges? Okay. Just like with the Paul William Airsline Delar fight that I brought up yesterday in my past, uh, last video, the th those fighters got suspended. I mean, those judges got suspended, even though the fight wasn't overturned. Why are we not pushing for these judges to get suspended? Why are these judges not going to the post conference and explaining their judge their, their scorecards? Okay, what that that's what we need to be focusing on. That's what boxing needs to push to clean all this BS up. Instead of these fighters, instead of because they, they the judges make their scorecards and then they they go on about their day, and the fighters are the one that takes the heat. And instead, have these judges do these interviews explaining themselves. Have them make videos round by round explaining how they gave the, uh, the round to a certain fighter. But that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think, man. Hey, then again, what do I know, right?